Afternoon all, Chief Prepper here. Uh, just coming back from the grocery store, picked up a couple things, a couple racks of ribs, may freeze one of them, I don't know. Some cold cuts for me, some donut holes for me, because you know, it's pumpkin season, so. Them shits are really bad for me. Boy, how yummy they are. So I wanted to talk to y'all, and if you're watching my channel, hopefully you're a prepper or you're studying prepping or you're learning about it. But unfortunately, a bunch of people's misery is a teaching point. Uh, and as bad as this sounds, uh, I'm glad the storm went that way instead of coming into Texas. I'm 109 miles off the coast, so we would have had some, some pretty devastating winds. Now, having said that, there are two more storms inbound. So one of the things I did today was uh, exchange a five-gallon propane tank. All right, I used one up last week, so one of the reasons I'm using propane a little bit more is because right now I am without a stove and a cooktop and a little oven so I'm actually leaning towards getting one of the old cheapy ones the old fucking circular uh, fucking burners because I'm just not the one we have I really like but and I like it because it's a double oven however uh, this is the second time it's gone out and I ordered the same part same symptoms and it didn't fix it. So four thousand dollar fucking thing and it's fucking dead with water. So uh, I'm pretty sure my order from Midway USA showed up. I ordered a, a bench sled to set uh, long guns in and I did that so that I can level some scopes. I have a scope on a gun that I want to all my guns except for one that I want to make sure are level. I'll do them probably one, maybe two at a time and then go back to the range and verify zero. I got the levels, I got the torque wrench, the torque screwdriver. So hopefully get all that done. So because I had one, I I set the scope and I was like, okay, I think it's okay, and then I had a guy do what I'm going to do to all my scopes, and it was off. So, we're back to the hurricane, so Texas is overdue, and there's a bunch of people that have property on Padre Island, and uh, my cousin who lived in Corpus for most of his life, uh, he is now gone. Said when a, a big hurricane comes, it washes Padre Island away. So, so I was talking about getting like a vacation home or something. And both him and my other cousin that's still alive that have lived in Corpus for most of their lives. Uh, yes, yeah, so yeah, you probably don't want to do that. Yeah. So the dirty picture nobody's talking about is how, what the insurance companies are getting ready to do to people. They have a lot of damage, they may drop you. They have a way to not pay you your claim. They will, right? I know this from personal experience. I had a renters that trashed my house and $12,000 for the damage they paid me a whopping $681. So I had to come out of pocket for 10 grand of repairs. So, having said that, insurance companies are losing money left and right. So that means they're going to raise rates wherever they can to compensate for that loss of revenue. Be aware. Uh, prepping 101, food, water, shelter, security, power, medicine. So I watched Pinball this morning. He is putting together a package to take to uh, a town that is devastated, that needs basically cleaning supplies and medical supplies. He was going to buy water, but he called and got a hold of somebody and they said, no, we need this, this, and this. So, this is uh, a day after the storm, I guess, went through. So, I haven't 
anything out of the federal government yet. I'm sure there's news everywhere, but you know, I think uh, everybody's, both sides are waiting to see which one is going to try to do a publicity stunt out of it. You know. Bottom line is this: ain't nobody coming to save save you. I've said over and over and over on this channel when Hurricane Henry came on shore in Texas back in 2018. Devastating winds missed my house by 16 miles. Rockport, Texas was without commercial power for a year. You know, it's one of those places that doesn't generate a lot of tax revenue. It was not considered to be important. Therefore, low on the priority list to get power back up. Enough about the area, but I've driven through Georgia, Alabama, and Tennessee. There's a lot of small places there, places that may not be a priority. So, if you have not invested in backup generation or power, I would recommend getting a dual fuel generator minimum, preferably tri fuel. Tri fuel is natural gas, liquid propane, and gasoline. Set it up to run. Stock propane because you can keep it for at least a decade. Gasoline, you have to rotate. I went out and tried to crank up my generators today, and again, I got two that won't start. One of them, I think, is out of gas. Another one, it's got gas. It's full, but it's not It's not starting. So I'm hoping that it's a fuel filter issue because it has one on there. I just, I got to take the time to dig around with it. I'm not going to do that today. I'm on my way home, and I'm going to get on a Harley after I crank it up and go. serious people are dying and more people will die so it goes to having going through jace or one of the other i think there's at least one other place that supplies stuff getting your emergency antibiotics uh getting a year's worth of uh medicine because you know these ports are getting ready to shut down we're a couple days away from that happening and uh while i was eating lunch i late lunch i was listening to the president of the union say he's going to shut it down you know I'm, I'm, I'm not as sure why I'm sure it's over money but you know that's uh that's a thing uh, you know what happens you know I've been listening to news and doing just a little bit of research basically within a week we're going to run out of bananas I just got some bananas but the ones I have are going to rot because I bought too many my wife said get some and she didn't fucking eat them. So, uh, I'll probably be able to eat one, maybe two tomorrow, and then three will go in the trash or go in the chicken pen. The, uh, you know, fruits and vegetables. All those ships have got cargo uh, insurance. If it goes bad, I don't know if they'll be able to file a claim. If they do, then, you know, insurance companies are going to lose money again. Because insurance companies are fucking Ponzi scheme. So here, pay me, pay me, pay me, and I'll pay you or something happens. And when something happens, they don't want to fucking pay you or they want to raise your rates or they want to drop you. And that's fact. USAA did that shit to me. I had two claims in 24, or 18 months. Uh, a, real, uh, a real estate company got the roof repaired on my house. And uh, USAA said if there's a third claim, they're going to drop you. That's the same company that fucked me on my on a house in Alabama. And they fucked a whole bunch of people over there when Rita and Katrina came through and hurricanes and uh, fucking tornado came through and fucking fucked up that high school and killed a teacher. So I think seven kids, so eight people died there. Lots of damage. Lots of people with USA insurance and USA didn't pay. Insurance companies are not your friend. They're like banks. They smile, they shake your hand, they're your best buddy, and then when you fucking need them, they fuck you. So, uh, with the election getting ready to happen right now for the month of October, my concentration is on paying off my wife's motorcycle, which I think we're gonna be able to do. And then the money at the end of October for November, I'm going to pull out of the bank and put it in a can because the 
election has got shit fucking stupid. And then if you're listening to Canadian Prepper and some of the other channels, there's a high likelihood of something happening, possibly something happening here in the U.S. So, you know, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, you're really late to the game if you're starting prepping, but if you're, if you're just starting, get after it, you know. Get the fuck after it. I've got 16 cases of water. Depending on how fucking shit goes, I may go get fucking 10 more. Uh, and then I got containers of water in the house that I need to rotate. So, you know, it's been three or four months since the last time I started my generators. Again, one of them isn't starting. It's the big one, so that, that may... It shouldn't be the carburetor this time because I had the fuel off, but the fuel may be bad. But, like everything, you get something, you gotta maintain it. So, we're already at 11 minutes, we're running the yap too much. I encourage all of y'all to prep, prep food, prep cooking capabilities, prep ways to clean. You know, you need soap for yourself, you need soap and sponges and scrubbers for your pots and pans. Alright, you need, you need stuff. Uh, you know, like people say, ah, oh, you're fear mongering, you're spreading fear porn. You're Look, there's four million people in eastern United States right now without electricity. There may be more, all right? There's flooding, devastation. Out of all of that is going to come disease. Okay? More people will die because of that. Ball brought up a point this morning. Alternate comms, and you know what the fuck you're gonna do if you call 911 and you can't get through? Because I can tell you that shit happened in Alabama when that tornado took out the fucking high school. The cell network was overwhelmed, and the police department was on the cell network, and they couldn't receive calls or do anything. So you need to be aware of the world you live in and understand that things are gonna go bad even if they only go bad for a week or so. Information is knowledge and power. Live a little prep a lot. Share love. Cheap prepper. Out.